Yo, what's up everyone, Legend Begins here, and we are back with something different today. You might even notice straight from the title screen that something is a little bit amiss in this episode, and I'm sure that just by reading the title you already know what is amiss, and that is the fact that we are playing Super Mario 64 with ray tracing enabled. Not your fake ray tracing, and unfortunately not with NVIDIA's RTX cores, but instead uh, just straight up legit old-fashioned ray tracing using your algorithms on your GPU and whatnot. But the fact that this game is so old means you can do stuff like that. Like, look how incredible this overworld looks. And this is running the original Super Mario 64 uh, with all of its glitchy old video game glory. This is not some sort of Unreal Engine remake. This is the OG game with new shaders injected to make it look really nice. Now, just as a, as a before and after, I have a control panel that allow me to select what things I want to turn on and off. So, if we want to go ahead and see what this thing looks like without the shaders enabled, we can do that right now. It is just, it is a night and day difference. Now, I have a couple of other shaders enabled that give it better shadows and depth and whatnot, but still. Like, this already looks better than Super Mario 64, and just turning sh the ray traced shaders back on is just... It is a, another world entirely. And I have one other thing I want to activate while we're in the castle. But I think you guys are going to like it. And that is correct. We have reflections in the castle. Look at the... This is a game that is 20 plus years old. Like, this ain't your grandparents Super Mario 64. This is not my childhood Super Mario 64. This is 2020 Super Mario 64. There is nothing that can compete with how good this looks. Now, if you want to know how to do this for yourself, uh, there are a couple of news articles out there that kind of go into it, but the best I can tell you is just you kind of got to figure it out. Uh, I'm, I can't really do a tutorial on it. Look, I'm reflected in the stairs. That's super cool. But effectively, it's just, it's a matter of, like, obtaining a copy of Super Mario 64, getting it to run properly with all the shaders, getting everything to, hooked up. It, 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 it's a process. So, uh, and then there's the whole matter of you want to be able to do that without, you know, breaking any laws, and that makes it even tougher. But it's doable. And if you guys do decide to do uh, any of this, definitely follow all of your local legislation. And Nintendo, don't take down the stupid video, because I haven't broken any laws. Anyway, let's go ahead and just check out some of these worlds. Let's go into Bob on Battlefield and just and see what's there. I'm going to turn off the, the shiny floor mode, because uh, Bob on Battlefield does not have shiny floors. It is just incredible. Now, I've gotten some of these some of these stars already. But let's, let's just take a look at this. It is insane the amount of effort in the open source community that went into this. Just... I love doing the before and after images, just look at, the, you can see the reflection of the grass on the walls. Like I said, it's not perfect, there are, there are issues. Sometimes it reflects Mario when he's really nothing to be reflected off of. Uh, sometimes it focuses in on the wrong area, it's, but overall, like, it looks really, really good. So regardless of its flaws, like the original game is flawed, this, I'll give it a pass. It looks so good for a game that has no built-in support for anything ray tracing uh, compatible. Nothing that even remotely looks like it should work with ray, tra ray tracing. Just, just look at this little area. You walk into it and everything gets redder. Turn off globe illumination. It is incredible the amount of effort that has gone into this project to reverse engineer Super Mario 64 and get everything to work uh, the way it should. Now let's go ahead and fire our cannon out into the distance. Ah, oh, man, this game looks so good. <laughs> and even here, just everything is reflected, everything looks so good. I don't know how they could have done uh, a better job turning a game from a uh, mid-90s, I want to say. I don't remember the year that Mario 64 came out. I should have looked that up. Anyway, uh, I don't know how to 
exit levels? Oh wait, there it is. Never mind. You just pause and hit exit. I think you can only exit if you have full HP, though. I'm gonna get a drink of my coffee. Today's creamer is, in fact, uh, Cinnamon Dolce. Let's turn back on the reflective floors while we're in the castle. That looks so good! I said this earlier, it looks like an Unreal game with those kind of reflections. This is gorgeous. Let's go ahead and go waltz into Thwomp's Fortress. And look, it's just the, the reflections off of the floor. It is incredible. Now, Thwomp's Fortress has something in particular that I am looking to show off. Let's turn off the reflections again. Because you, trust me, you don't want to see the reflections on when they shouldn't be on. It's not a pleasant experience. But let's go ahead and waltz our way over here. I do have to play this on keyboard, so please forgive me if my controls aren't very good. Look at the reflection of the water turning the wall blue. It is incredible. And I, I'm saying it a lot, but it looks so good. And I don't know, maybe YouTube's compression is, is messing it up. But for me right now, this thing is really good looking. And I find it kind of incredible that Minecraft and Mario 64 are two of the leading cases of ray tracing live in modern video games. Like, look at the light bouncing off of that thwomp. If that is not incredible, uh, I don't know what is. Let's not die, and instead go to a different stage. Just, you can see my reflection off of that wall. It is just incredible. Let's see if it, uh, if it reflects off of the, yep, yeah, you can see the red uh, bouncing off of that stone wall. Again, it's not perfect. It really can't be, considering it doesn't have texture maps or anything else that would uh, allow it to be perfect, but still. It looks really, really good for what it is. Let's go ahead and walk into the ice area and see what there is to see. Because that'll allow us to check out some of the other different lighting fixtures. And again, you got that red reflection. It is a really, really good looking uh, mod for this game. Now, if you, I, like, I'm sure you might have uh, checked out some of the articles about it. Look, look at this right here. Look at this right here. It goes from kind of a warm lighting, you jump up here, you're surrounded by ice, the lighting gets cooler. And not just like, neater, but actually the, the colors are cooler. Anyway, you might have checked out some of the articles about it. Uh, a few people have written some tech articles regarding how this was pulled off. And if you, if you work for one of those articles and you want information on how to get this set up so you can check it out for yourself, uh, hit me up in the comments or via PM and I will gladly help you out. Uh, but other than that, Let's see if we can survive the slide. I, my confidence in my own ability to survive the slide using keyboard controls is rather nil, but I will do my best either way. Oh, uh, nope. I cannot do that. I am not good enough at playing this game by keyboard. When testing it out, I did actually get that to work briefly, but alas, I can never do it on camera. And I just, I love how the lighting, it just adapts based off of where you are and where you came from. I'm gonna turn back on the uh, reflections. I just, I love the reflections a lot. That is a real neat feature. Go through this hallway, it's red. I guess the carpet shouldn't be reflective. Let's just say it was, it was just cleaned, I guess. Ah, excellent. The good old Ella's Real 2401. Or Eternal Star, or neither. Uh, fun fact of the day, is that reflecting the star? That's kind of cool. Fun fact of the day, uh, that same texture for the plaque is used in, I want to say, Ocarina of, uh, Ocarina of Time, but it could also be in Majora's Mask, but I'm fairly certain it's used in Ocarina of Time. So, uh, I can pretty much guarantee that it does not say Elisreal 2401. There are also a few bugs, but you know what, that's just part of the process. Nobody expected this to be perfect, especially considering the original Super Mario 64 itself is far, far from perfect. Like, there, there's a little bit of a lighting glitch with that. But who cares? You have a ray-traced Mario 64. What more could you possibly want? Um, un unrelated. One of my favorite filters happens to be the ASCII filter. Because it just turns everything into ASCII text, and it looks really neat. As somebody who works with computers... Uh, for a living, I love the way this looks. I'm a big fan. And 
If for whatever reason you wanted to uh, check this out in its old CRT style, that is also an option if I can possibly find that. Uh, CRT, where where are you, Mr. CRT? Advanced CRT. And you can check out the ray traced uh, <laughs> global illumination and reflection version of this game with a CRT filter on. That is pretty sweet looking. Like, imagine if back in the day, you're a kid growing up in the 90s, you turn on your Nintendo 64, you just got Super Mario 64 for Christmas, and this is what you see. It would have blown your mind. It would have blown my mind. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, you know, as a kid, you can't really appreciate that, that kind of stuff as much as you otherwise can. Let's check out uh, Jolly Roger Bay. Plunder in the sunken ship. And check out that, uh, I'm gonna turn off the reflections again. Uh, check out that horrifying, terrifying eel. And another thing that I want to point out, in Jolly Roger Bay specifically, you gotta see what the ocean, or the, the, uh, the bay looks like with and without ray tracing. Just the amount of transparency that you get based off of the light rays is just, it is incredible. It looks so much better. Again, I don't know if YouTube's compression is messing this thing up, but it looks really, really good. So I definitely recommend, if you have the means, give this thing a shot. It is worth your time. I do think, though, that it causes this weird-looking fog. I mean, no, it's already there. I guess it just makes it feel more serious than it is. Ultimately, what a gorgeous game. Just the amount of time that goes into a project like this. I mean, go talk to the devs. I would absolutely put a link to the GitHub in the comments, but again, I'm going to wait for all of the uh, complaints from Nintendo to die down. I'm not afraid. Ouch. I'm more afraid of that eel up there than I am of, the, of Nintendo right now. Now, if Nintendo went after me, I would be very scared because they're not exactly known for being nice to content creators. They're kind of the Disney of video games when it comes to their copyright. And even if you're using something completely in fair use, like this, Nintendo, take note if you're watching, is in fair use, yes, uh, then they still like to go after it, which is a shame. I mean, I hate the fact that you have a company who, who does make really great games, uh, have really poor customer relation policies, and they've hurt a lot of YouTubers because of those kind of things, which, you know, nothing much you can do about it. It's just unfortunate. Uh, but Sega, on the other hand, as many mistakes and faults as they have, they do an awesome job when it comes to consumer protection and um, not being horrible and stingy and uh, arguably illegal when it comes to their IP. Sega is very much a pro community. So if I have to give them anything, I will give them that. Sega, you do a good job when it comes to not suing people for not infringing on fair use. You do a good job at doing what you're supposed to do, but no, Sega actually does go above and beyond for making sure that the community has the ability to uh, take on the kind of projects they want, even if it does involve Sega's intellectual property, which is really cool. Uh, Nintendo, on the other hand, is like, yeah, no, you're gonna, you're gonna get sued, my friend. Anyway, is there a star that shows up over there? I don't think so. No, it's just to get to the red coin, which you don't even need that. You can just jump across. Anywho, let us go ahead. Oh, there's the eel. I, he came out. Neat. I don't know how I triggered that, but you know what? I will take it. Be as a child, just swimming around with that eel terrified me. It was horrible. It, it looks really cool, but like, that thing is scary, yo. Oh, I... Can you not go in here? I thought you could. But I thought there... Oh, there it is. Sweet! Where is the star? That is the question. Give me my air bubble. Thank you. Drowning in video games is like one of the scariest things you can possibly end up doing. Or, uh, I guess, avoiding. Just because, like, once I... This is partially related. I once set my alarm to the Sonic Drowning music, just because I was like, oh, that freaked me out as a kid. I'm sure I'll get up as soon as I start, you know, having a heart attack when I 
uh, when I wake up in the morning. I did that for one evening. A single evening before I realized my mistake and what an incredible, intense mistake it was. One of the worst decisions in my life, surely. It was, it was really bad. I mean, how, how would you feel if you woke, if you just like woke up one day to the sound of dun 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 It's terrifying. Anyway, let's let's get the star and see what the star does to the illumination. It lights up the scene. If that isn't cool, I don't know what is. You can see it phasing in and out based off the rotation of the star. Like, come on. If you're not impressed by that, then I don't know what to tell you, because that looks cool. And no matter what anybody tells me, that's gonna stay looking cool. That is cool! Anyway, I just kind of wanted to show this thing off. I'll let you guys take a look at it, and just really have the opportunity to appreciate it, because, you know, a lot of work went into it, and to all the components that made this happen. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. But other than that, I really appreciate you guys watching. Let me know if you guys want to see more of this, maybe different shaders in the future. Uh, anything else you want me to cover, I would be more than glad to. So thanks for watching, and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And I'll see you guys next time. Good.